my only goal in the NHL is to win the Stanley Cup. There's not a player in the NHL that doesn't dream about that. It's huge because it's the last goal that I have left in the NHL at this point in time in my career is to win a Stanley Cup on another hockey team. When I grew up in Russia, we didn't know too much about the uh, Stanley Cup. You can get so, so many chances to win. The, the pinnacle of a, a professional hockey player is the Stanley Cup, and probably it's the most difficult uh, trophy to win in all, in all of sports. The New York Rangers, haunted for 54 years by visiting city chants of 1940 and the reality that it's been a lifetime for most since the Rangers last won the coveted Stanley Cup. Talk of curses and hexes since 1941 when Red Dutton's rival New York Americans were forced out of Madison Square Garden. Dutton vowing the Rangers would never win another Stanley Cup in his lifetime. As far as all these uh, curses and that, I don't believe in that kind of nonsense, but uh, I feel sorry for the fans. I hope they get their wish pretty soon. They've got good depth. They've got good speed, and I'd say this is their best chance to win the uh, Stanley Cup since maybe 1940. The fact that there is some history here from 1940, I think it only enhances the, the excitement about the prospects of success, and I think the team is feeding off of that. All city want their team to win, obviously, but this has become uh, city-possessed. Uh, that 1940 looms so big in everybody's craw, and... Uh, and uh, we hope that it's, uh, it's a pressure that uh, may come to play against uh, the actual players. 1940 was 28 years before I was born, so with that in mind, you, you put it in the past, and, and I think you, you ask anyone on the team, there's not a better place to play than New York and not a better organization than the Rangers. The Rangers, with NHL best 112 points in the regular season, opened the playoffs against their arch rivals from Long Island. Mike Richter posted consecutive shutouts in games one and two, the first Ranger to do so since Davey Kerr back in 1940. The Rangers completely dominated in the four-game sweep. The Rangers dispensed of another Atlantic Division rival, the Washington Caps, in the Eastern Conference semis. Brian Leach scoring the game-winning goal late in Game 5, propelling New York to the Conference Finals for the first time in eighth season. The New Jersey Devils in the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time since 1988. It took several trips through the Lincoln Tunnel to decide this one. The Rangers had won all six meetings in the regular season, but the Devils took a 3-2 lead in the best of seven by winning game five on Garden Ice. Then Mark Messier's bold guarantee that the Rangers would win game six, evoking memories of Joe Willie Namath's vow before Super Bowl three. Moving it over the devil line, cuts to the slot, feeds Messier, backhands, he scores! Messier has tied it at two! Drops it for Kovalev, left circle, slap shot, save, rebound, score! Messier, Messier, and the Rangers take a 3-2 to two lead! Messier gets it back, shoots it all the way down, he scores! Messier hits the open net, that's the hat trick for Captain Mark Messier! They were saying that I was guaranteeing a win, and it, you know, it wasn't really about uh, about that, it was about trying to regain the confidence in the team and make sure, make sure the team had the confidence that we could come here and do it. And, uh, you know, I guess they you know, were better careful next time. The Rangers then went out and won game seven in double overtime. Matteau swoops in to intercept. Matteau behind the net, swings it in front, he scores! Matteau, Matteau, Matteau! Stefan Matteau! And the Rangers have one more hill to climb, baby! But it's Mark Vancouver! The Rangers are headed to the finals! Vancouver's playoff odyssey began at the Saddle Dome in picturesque Calgary. The Flames held a commanding three games to one lead in the best of seven, but the Canucks battled back, engineering one of the most memorable comebacks in NHL playoff history. The deciding seventh game went to double overtime. A spectacular save by Kirk McLean on Warren Reichel kept the Canucks from the throes of defeat. Brown, a long pass to Pavel Bury. In the clear, right in. Yeah, it scores! Pavel Bury has won it in overtime at 2.20 of 
of the second overtime. We didn't talk about three games. We have to win three games. We just said, okay, guys, tonight we, we have to win. We got no choice. And we win one, we win two, we win three. I've been on teams before. When you're down three games to one, you're thinking, oh, I just want to go home, this and that. And, you know, it's been a decent year type thing. But not this year because we weren't satisfied with what we've done uh, during the regular season. I think that helped us, you know, to perform better in the playoffs. So it was on to the Western Conference semifinals where the Canucks advanced by beating the Dallas Stars in five games. The Western Conference finals between Vancouver and Toronto. The Maple Leafs one step away from the finals for the second straight year. Pavel Bore was at his absolute best in game three with two goals on breakaways leading to a 4-0 win. Kirk McLean recorded two shutouts in the five-game series which was decided in double overtime. Linden carries the puck. Into the Toronto zone, turning off the left boards, back at the line to Babbage, long shot, five man had trouble with it. Adams in score! Big Adams! Big Adams! Adams gets the winner! 14 seconds into the second overtime, the Vancouver Canucks are going to the Stanley Cup final! The Vancouver Canucks hoping to join the 1915 Vancouver Millionaires, that city's only Stanley Cup champion, while the New York Rangers seek their first Stanley Cup title in 54 years. The sports world awaits the crowning of a new champion. I'm still trying to figure out what a Canuck is. Are the Rangers going to win? Yeah. Look at these colors. It looks like the circus must be back in town. Let's go, Rangers! Go, Rangers! This the scene inside a near-empty Madison Square Garden, two hours before Game 1's opening face-off. Quite a different mood. The intensity starting to build. The Rangers and Canucks making final preparations for what many in New York were predicting to be a short series. The New York Rangers and Vancouver Canucks have hit the garden ice. The matchups in goal, Mike Richter for New York against Vancouver's Kirk McLean, who was looking for his first career win against the Rangers. With the team skating four aside, the Rangers open the scoring. Leach moves in. Back pass to Pavlov. Pavlov thanks move. He shoots. Save for play. Rebound score. Oh, baby. A check of the replay shows the puck actually deflected off McLean's skate and into the net. On to the third period. Cucks on the power play, still trailing 1 0. Kick away. Save for play. It's Messier. Then out of the late penalty call on the Rangers. Yurke Lume with the shot. Brett Hedekin putting home the rebound. Only his second career goal, and it was all tied at one. Less than three minutes later. Pass to Leach, went off his stick, bounces down, gains control. Leach turns, pass for Kamala, he scores! Beautiful pass by Brett. Just over a minute left in regulation. The Rangers still holding on to that one goal lead. Martin Jelena credited with the tying goal. The Rangers, for the third time in eight games, give up the equalizer in the final minute of play. They go to overtime, tied at two. Unfortunately for New York Jets quarterback Boomer Esiason, whose three-year-old son Gunner couldn't quite make it past the third period. Well, he missed a terrific overtime and quite a show put on by Kirk McLean. Here's Gray, saved by McLean. Take it in, comes out in front, he shoots. Save McLean, rebound, another save. Messier for Graves, save McLean, he did it again. Larner leaves it for Tinkin and for the shot, save, rebound. A save, rebound, another save. McLean will not allow that puck to get by him. Canucks win this, it'll be like Jesse James was in town. The Rangers with a decisive edge in overtime with 17 shots on goal, but McLean was spectacular. 52 saves in all, and some good fortune helped sway the outcome in game one. Great play down the middle, reach, hit the crossbar! He hit the crossbar! 38 seconds left to go, 2-1-1 Adams in the middle. Craig Adams, scores! The Vancouver Canucks have won it in overtime, 3-2! Craig Adams in a 2-1-1 break! 
You know, it's it's hard to say if we deserve that game or not. They they played a great game, and uh, Kirk Kirk McLean was the story of that game. I'll tell you, he made some game-saving uh, saves tonight, and uh, hats off to him. Uh, without him tonight, uh, would have been a one of a different different story, I guess. That was a tough loss <clears throat> to give up a goal at the end in uh, regulation and. Uh, to lose an OT like that, but uh, you know we got to come back. We feel that we have the type of team that can overcome a hot goaltender like that tonight. It didn't happen, but uh, I don't know how many nights you can have that type of performance. I hope not too many more. Vancouver walked out of here with a win tonight because of their goaltender. Period. You feel you stole one from the Rangers? Well, I think so. Yeah, and, uh, you know I think we all think that, and and if we can play like that and, and, and win a game, you know it's it's positive and. Uh, you know, we need to come in and win at least one of the two. Kirk McLean, give him a kiss, boys, because he saved your life tonight. Thank you. There you go. Good luck. Thank you. The Rangers signing autographs for their fans at their Rye, New York practice site on this day after game one. It was June 1st, and despite the sign which says the Rangers practice only from October to April, they took to the ice, determined to find a way to solve Kirk McLean. Aware of the fact that only five teams in NHL history have bounced back to win the cup after losing game one at home. We'll have to put uh, more traffic in front of him, right in front of him, if we have more success. If he makes 52 saves in a game, you know, obviously we're in trouble, but uh, that's probably not going to happen. And we've just got to get more traffic in front and, and keep putting the puck at the net. The Vancouver Canucks trying to get to that next plateau, as well as the arena level for game two at Madison Square Garden. Right behind the Canuck players, the arrival of the Canuck Mobile. And I will drive 5,000 miles away. Three Vancouver fans drove this 1977 Matador across North America to watch their team in the finals. It's the Stanley Cup. That car didn't get stolen tonight. Right, it doesn't belong here. This is New York. Our first encounter with the Rangers fan was when we came through the, the border at Niagara Falls. We drove up to the stall and the officer said, please stop the car and turn off the engine. He stared at us and he said, Rangers and four boys, get going. Prior to game two, renowned sports artist Leroy Neiman working on a portrait of the Russian rocket Pavel Bore. And the Rangers immediately went to work on McLean, rushing the Vancouver netminder whenever possible. Former Canuck Doug Litster making it 1 0 Rangers. I don't score that often, and the fact that it was against my former team was nice, but it was. Uh, it was more an emotion of, yes, we've gotten off to a good start. Moments later, Sean and Toski nailed Litster, who was penalized for retaliating. That set the tone for what would become a very hard-hitting game. The Rangers playing shorthanded with Adam Graves in the penalty box midway through the second period. Here comes Messier shorthanded. Messier pushes the puck up, forced him out of the net. These guys did it so often in Edmonton. Now they have teamed up for a very big goal here in game two in New York. A short-handed goal, the second of the playoffs for the Rangers. Mass made a great play by uh, uh, intercepting the pass that Lyndon was moving over to the far point, man, and got a partial breakaway. You know, I think we played long enough to know that he would have been uh, on my tail, and uh, I knew once the puck went by the net, it just somehow got it uh, in front. Hopefully, he'd find a way to get there. And like I said, that's what he does. I mean, he just finds a way of uh, scoring huge goals. The Rangers doing a good job on Pavel Bore's line. Bore's 16 game playoff scoring streak coming to an end in game two. Both teams narrowly missed several scoring chances in this one, and Bore was one of many who hit the post. Heavy metal is in in the National Hockey League. The Rangers found themselves in the same situation as game one. Up one goal, trying to avoid another last-minute breakdown. Pat Quinn pulled McLean to get an extra skater and called timeout to set up one last scoring chance. 20 seconds to go. Jeff Brown across ice. Greg Adams moves in down the boards. Brown. Brown 
looking to center in front. And the shot deflected wide. Uh, Leach clears the zone. It's heading for the empty net. The Rangers will win. An empty net goal clinches game two for the New York Rangers. All right, no overtime. Thank God. We were sitting at uh, lunch today, and, and Adam Graves said there's one of the best money game, money players in the game, uh, referring to Anderson. And as he walked away, he's saying, before before this is over, he'll score at least one big goal. And sure enough, he gets the game winner tonight. You've got to be as dangerous as offense as they are. And we're having trouble, especially our line. We're not doing a very good job offensively. And, um, and we've got to make them pay for any three on twos they give us. It was win this game. We have to win this game. Uh, you know, it was no or else. but. You know, we knew we had to win this one. We didn't play that as well as we wanted to, and we're still in the game. And um, but uh, if there's anything good that comes out of it, we did get the split, and, and uh, you know, I have to look forward to playing the two games in Vancouver now. Right now, best of the five, so we're in a good position. Bing bang boom is going to describe the Stanley Cup playoff year. The Canucks chartered back to Vancouver immediately after game two. The Rangers flew out the next day. And because of the home ice advantage, this was only their second time in an airplane in more than two months. It remained to be seen whether the Rangers' lack of frequent flyer miles would work to their advantage. The trip to Vancouver meant a trip back home for Ranger forward Glenn Anderson and defenseman Doug Litster. Both scored goals in game two. Litster played with the Canucks for 10 years before being dealt to the Rangers during the offseason. While Anderson grew up just six blocks from Pacific Coliseum and was very happy to be back playing in front of his friends and family. I could have gone complete reversal and uh, um, ended up working on dad's fish boat. <laughs> But uh, after being sick for four days straight the first time I was out, I definitely didn't want to make that my career. And we're his number one fans. We're coming here and watching the Orland Curtain backs, the Andre Boudrias, Bobby Schmott, Cesar Maniegos, Dennis Curran's, all the old guys uh, back in the 70s. Um, and coming here and now playing against the Canucks who have changed their uniforms around since I've watched. It, uh, it's pretty special to come into this building. That's it, that's it, Jeff. Both teams conducted short workouts on the off day at the Coliseum. First the Canucks, then the Rangers. Vancouver coach Pat Quinn was still upset that the Rangers were able to follow through on their game two promise to create more traffic and more scoring chances in front of goaltender Kirk McLean. New York even said they're going <laughs> to, they didn't say they're going to run our goaltender. They're going to be in traffic while well, Graves was running our goaltender. And uh, it wasn't stopped. There wasn't even a warning. I don't think that there's any more contact uh, with uh, McLean, uh, any more contact with McLean as opposed to contact with Richter. The beautiful landscape of Vancouver, British Columbia. This the spectacular Capilano suspension bridge, the longest of its kind. It's evident that support of the Canucks has been unwavering since their playoff run began. The city caught up in Canucks fever everywhere you turn. It's go Canucks go, even at the site of the new home arena under construction. Vancouver is home to Stanley Park, named by Lord Stanley himself. Downtown, the cup bearing his name was on prominent display for all Vancouverites to appreciate. Like their counterparts in New York, Canuck fans were in a feisty yet festive mood before game three. Inside Canucks defenseman Brian Glenn limbering up and perhaps wondering what's in store for game three. Out of the Rangers' shadow stepped the Russian rocket, Pavel Bore. Lumet shot into the line. 